Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I'm going to be showing you exactly how to get Polaris for free. And this is very important that you do ASAP because she's only free for the next 28 days in the future pass. After that, she will be only available through the X Gene subscription, which is a paid subscription obviously making it unavailable to non-paying players so if you go over to the xgene daily you'll see that she's already added there if you want to do this that way later on if you're watching this video in the future and you don't know how to get her this is the only way to get polaris however if you're watching this video in the first 28 days congratulations you have an opportunity for free to get polaris all you have to do is grind the season pass up to level 15 very easy just do your dailies every day and you should have this done no problem I mean, doing your dailies every day for 30 days will easily get you to level 50, where you get the best reward, the token, the 300 tokens, which is half a premium card. But today we're just focusing on Polaris. So you want to select Polaris from the uh, future pass. You're going to get 10 biometrics of hers. You can see there that I got it. And now I will have her available as an unlockable character. So we're going to go ahead and unlock our one star Polaris. She's got the helicopter in the background it explodes looking absolutely gorgeous so now that we have our one star polaris this is where we get to work now the very first star upgrade from one to two stars you're going to want to use rank up tickets on her regardless right you're going to want to use either regular rank up tickets like this or a mega rank up ticket if you have a mega rank up ticket go ahead and use that you're done however if you want to go the route of regular rank up tickets and we talked about this for toxin we talked about this for mbaku i sort of fixed the the toxin mistakes with the mbaku video but essentially you just need to be on the lookout for the token event there's going to be a token event that happens about two weeks after every update and it's branded so this was a, the token event for fear itself this was the token event for the symbiote update this was the token event for the wakanda forever mcu update and this is going to be the next token event destiny of x with the polaris icon there that's going to be the one where you can trade 50 of those tokens for a two-star rank up ticket that's very important because the two-star rank up ticket is the key to having the full rank up for free. Again, we're doing this for free. If you go into the event quest that's on right now for the next five days and you've collected the pre-update event tokens, you can trade those in for a three and four star rank up ticket. So now you have the two, you have the three, and you have the four, okay? Now you just need the five and the six. For the five and the six, they're gonna come via bonus missions. There aren't bonus missions available right now for me to show you, but there are if you go back to the previous videos I did for Toxin and Mbaku. Basically, one of them is a gold bonus mission that I believe gives you the five star uh, ticket for free. And then one of them is an energy spending mission that I believe gives you a six star ticket for free. However, if you miss those missions and you just cannot wait to uh, max out your Polaris, you can also use these tokens during this event. You can trade them in for a two star and a three star and a four star and a five star and a six star ticket. So you can sort of do that, all that. You shouldn't need to do it for the three and the four because they're right here. But I just wanted to let you guys know there's multiple avenues to getting yourself all the way up to a six star ticket. So now that you've gotten the two through six, you're going to have her ranked up like this. Boom. We're done there. Now from here, you basically have two choices. You could either start ranking her up here. I don't recommend it um, because, you know, you're not going to get the, the full power here. And she needs to be tier two to have the passive. But for some players, this is as far as they're willing to go because they don't want to use a mega tier two ticket. But that's basically the next step after you've ranked her up. Don't touch her gears. Don't touch her level or her mastery. Just go ahead and use one of these. Now you can see I'm low on these. You can also get these, if you're wondering, from that same token event. I know it's a lot of tokens. You're not going to have enough to get everything I mentioned, but you do have enough to get the mega tier two ticket and to get the two star rank up ticket. You can get both in one month and these come around every month. So you have 12 chances a year or 11 chances a year to do this. And we're not even getting 11 characters per year anymore. So you'll have more than you need. Um, but yeah, that's basically the best way to do it is to use the, the mega tier two ticket. Once in a while, there will be sales in the shop where you can trade 3000 or 5000 crystals for a bundle that includes a mega tier two ticket. We had one recently for Black Friday. So you could use that on her as well. But my advice to you, of course, as always, is before you use it, unless you're sure that you're going to love the character, right? If, you, if you're a Polaris fan or whatever, uh, that's, that's not a question that I need to answer. You've already answered it for us. But if you're unsure, if, you're gonna, if you want to use the Mega Tier 2 ticket on her, then just stick around and watch videos and see how these characters perform. 
generally speaking characters that have leadership and support abilities are not going to be as good standalone for content but that's not always the case but keep in mind with polaris even if you are spending all these resources on her you are getting a mutant that gives all mutant allies 45 percent attack that's villain or hero mutant allies so that includes namor magneto etc and she also gives all mutant allies again namor included all villains included all villain mutants uh, gives them increased damage to villains and decreased damage from villains but possibly the most valuable part of polaris is that if you skipped or could not buy storm's uniform you have uh polaris available for the blast superhero mutant day and while she may not be able to score by herself she can definitely help augment your other characters so for example if you were using if you didn't have storm and you were using betsy right if you have this team here this team is excellent but cyclops is honestly easily replaced here by polaris believe it or not polaris is a better support here for psylocke than cyclops is because cyclops gives 85 percent energy attack which is nice but polaris gives 45 percent attack and then that other 40 percent is more than made up by that increased damage to supervillains if you guys don't know uh increased damage to supervillains is more than a one-to-one -one, uh comparison with energy attack or all attack increase so this 45 percent increased damage dealt um is probably equal to 60 or 80 percent by itself um increase attack yes damage scales better than attack scales in the damage formula as far as we understand it so polaris is by far the best lead now for content where she's available and you are buffing mutant allies so keep that in mind there whereas previously it was cyclops or or magneto now as far as leveling up her skills go if we're still going back to the build and focusing you do want to level up her fifth skill all the way because of that heal and because of the all defense down her fourth skill rebar clash you're also going to want to level it up all the way to make sure that immunity is a hundred percent and not fifty percent i know it's a lot of gold but you kind of have to do that here you also have to level up the skill all the way because you want that 0.5 percent accumulation to actually be one percent accumulation the other numbers don't matter that much uh, and then for these skills here you can actually leave them you actually don't need to level them up at all because the the increased damage is minute you can see here it really just increases the additional damage i'm gonna do it just anyways for my own sake but for skill one and two if you're really tight on gold you can completely skip them or if you want to hedge you can just level them up to a level three there as far as the iso 8 set goes because she doesn't have a uniform generally we're going to aim for power of angry hulk if we take a look at her stats here she's already over capped on cooldown which is really nice but yeah her attack speed is lacking her gears she gets attack she does actually get a little bit of attack speed on her gears she also gets defense she also gets skill cooldown and hp which is really good and then she gets ignore defense so she actually has very good gears for capping the important stats i could obviously change that dodge roll over to something else like attack speed but i think i'd rather get the uh, power of angry hulk set which will put her attack speed close to um, maxed out there you have it we've updated the iso 8 set with power of angry hulk to get that attack speed it's not maxed out we need to fully awaken and master those um chaotic iso but that's how it looks as for the uru i've just gone ahead and awakened four or five slots whatever i hit first and then slapped on eight energy attack urus at the mythic rank i wouldn't necessarily start with mythic rank unless you have a lot of spare um uru i would start with you know three star or four star uru and then work your way up depending on how important and, and powerful and useful the character is across game modes but that's my general advice of course if you're going for like rank one polaris you're just going to chuck a bunch of odin's blessings on her good luck with that but this is my sort of template for how i build characters and then i go ahead and see after using the character you know what do they need next so i go to the details page i take a look okay we're about 40 percent under capped on crit rate so if i want polaris to deal more damage if i am using her as an alternative to storm betsy emma to actually deal damage in, in an abl try to hit 500k or whatever the score is then yeah i'm gonna need to cap her crit damage do i need to cap her crit rate probably not i think she has a frenzy buff that soft caps her crit rate um she does not have a frenzy buff wow so you are gonna need to soft you are gonna need to cap her her crit rate because it does not have a soft cap from buffs wow she doesn't have any stat buffs at all on her kit wow that's crit. i never noticed that she didn't have any frenzy buffs whatsoever from the patch notes wow so yeah it's gonna be a bit more difficult with polaris because you're gonna need to try and cap both her crit rate and her crit damage so that's something to consider if you're gonna give her a ctp you know um 
If you give her something like a rage for alliance battle, it's going to help cap the crit rate and the dodge. And then you just focus all of your Urus on crit damage. Or, or if you're going to go for a, a proc build and you're going to go with like an energy or something like that, then you're going to need to give her crit rate Urus to cap the crit rate. But yeah, you're going to want to try and cap the crit rate and the crit damage and then leave the rest for dodge unless it's a rage in which you need the crit rate. You need all three capped for a rage. Basically, it's a little bit harder there. But again, that depends on your build. As far as getting her past level 60, if you don't have potential realization tickets, and I don't necessarily recommend using them on her, if you're just using her as a leadership and support, you don't need her past level 60, but you can just take her into World Boss Ultimate or World Boss Legend as a character or as a striker in World Boss Legend, um, and she can get her potential, and I believe in World Boss Ultimate as a striker, she can get her potential there um, to then be unlocked and be able to go to level 70. But generally speaking, you only need her to go to level 70 if you're using her to deal damage. As a leadership and support, you can leave the character blank after getting her tier 2. You don't need to give her the Uru. You don't even need to give her Artifact, Obelisk, or ISO 8 set. I know it's kind of mean to say that and to leave the character kind of barren. But um, yeah, if it, the realistic the realistic alternative, like that's the truth. If you're just using her for the leadership and support, um, these, uh, these effects and these builds don't matter. The only way that these things would matter is if you care about slotting her into your dispatch for the passive rewards then you're going to want her growth score to be much higher because then that matters for increasing your um, dispatch, you know, setup. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you go over here, I'm talking about this. So the growth score is a combination of all the characters that you have. So if you have some slots that are empty for mutants or if you have some slots that are filled by mutants who are not very well built and you can swap Polaris in for one of them that doesn't have a uniform, um, then you can bump up your growth score and then it bumps up how much how many rewards you're getting per hour because as you can see here i'm getting 255 gold per minute on this one but because this one is one level higher i'm getting 270 gold per minute and that doesn't seem like a lot it's only an increase of 15 per minute but it definitely adds up over time so that about does it for the build for polaris for now i am going to test her out without an obelisk and then with an obelisk i'm not sure how proc friendly she's going to be if we take a look at her skills quickly here she has really gorgeous skills she has a really cool intro as well exploding the helicopter from the from the get um, for her first skill it's just very straightforward i would almost never use this skill unless i'm just splashing it in at the end of like a rage rotation or a judgment not a judgment rotation a rage rotation same thing goes for the second skill again just not really much happening here the third skill is where things start to get more interesting she slams the ground and then she creates this field and you can actually cancel after she slams the ground into another skill so this is a very nice delayed cancel it may be difficult to delay cancel into a proc but that is what you're aiming for, it, it, potentially. Her fourth skill, she raises up all these bars and then she throws them at you. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous animation. Again, as soon as she starts raising them up, you can cancel this skill and they will uh, they will continue to go up. You can't instant cancel it, as you can see there. Instant canceling does not work. If I instant cancel, you got to delay it just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit of a delay. And then uh, they will fly out. And then for the fifth skill, you can't cancel this one because she's channeling as she uh, brings down another helicopter. So probably what you want to do is a four cancel, three cancel, five. This is probably the rotation you want to aim for. And this is quite strong. You can see here 260 hits on three targets. That's uh, that's that's pretty nice. You know, that's like 70 hits on a single target. A little bit more than 75 hits on a single target. or 80 hits on a single target. Uh, but yeah, that's very, very nice. Uh, combo there, uh, you know, especially if you have some chain hit. And then her tier three skill is like this, and it's got the rebars and the orb in the middle, and then it explodes. Really gorgeous skill. If you have the tier three skill up, I would probably say you should do four cancel, three cancel, five cancel, six. You do still want to cancel five into six. I believe five has a damage proc buff, so you do want to try and pass that over to one of the other skills uh, instead of just skipping it. It may be difficult to time. Uh, which is why I'm saying that she may not be proc friendly, but we'll leave that to find out in a separate video. So yeah, that's how to build Polaris. That is the best uses for Polaris in terms of being a leadership and support and possibly an alternative damage dealer. And then that is a potential rotation uh, for dealing damage with Polaris, depending on your build, if you have a, an obelisk or a CTP of rage. Not a CTP of judgment. That does not work. She does not have elemental damage. So yeah, hopefully that helps you out. Good luck grinding and getting your Polaris for free. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button and I will see you in the next one. Take care.